At the beginning of the story, we are told that a planet named Motherworld has been ruled by the royal bloodline for thousands of years. However, when their hunger increased and they started capturing other planets in space, a dangerous assassin attacked Motherworld. The world's king was assassinated, and the royal bloodline ended. A senator named Belisarius took advantage of the opportunity to take over Mother World and sent one of his Shabazz commanders to hunt down and kill any rebels who rose up against him. Put to work, after which we see a girl named Cora who was farming. Then, Gunner comes to call her because today there was a feast in their village. From his actions, we know that he likes Cora. The feast begins at night, in which we see Cora's father. After which, the head of their village starts telling them that God has given us a good harvest this year. For that, we have to make a sacrifice to him. Cora is talking to her father, who asks her to marry a man named Dunn, so she can become a part of their community. We learn that Cora is not his real daughter. Actually, two years ago, she was found in a crashed ship. Cora used to be a warrior in whom she was taught to stay away from all these things like love and family. Well, the next morning when she was with a girl named Sam while she was sowing in the fields, an imperial ship starts hovering in the atmosphere of her planet. Cora, seeing this, runs to inform everyone. Gunner explains to the chief that there is no need to be afraid if we give them some part of our crop, so they can become our partners, and for that, they can get a huge amount of money. But Gunner had actually done the same thing with Rebel, and if the Imperials come to know about this, then it would be very bad for them. Hence, they are not even aware of it. It seems that their land is very fertile. Then a child tells them that they have arrived there, and then some Imperial ships land on their land. From which comes out Belisarius Jabus commander Atticus who hugs their leader. And then he starts taking Atticus towards their longhouse, and on the way tells him about their village. Here we all work by sharing and survive with great difficulty. After which Atticus tells them that they have come here searching for some rebels, known as the Blood Hacks. They have also cut off their food supply, so the Imperials want to make a deal with them, in which they will supply food to the Imperial troopers, in exchange for Imperial will give them three times the money. Where Gunner likes this offer, but his chief throws his hands up, and says that he is running out of food for the people of his village because there is a lot of stone in his land, and the soil here is also not good. So he must have been forced to reject this offer. After which, when they go inside the longhouse, Atticus wanted to talk to the supervisor of their farm, which was Gunner. He tells Atticus that what our chief told you, that's all true but they have some reserve crop lying around which they have saved it for emergencies. If he wants, he can take some of it to Imperial where their leader tells Atticus that Gunner has no authority here and they should not pay attention to him. Atticus tells this. He doesn't like it and he gives a suggestion to the chief as to what should happen when a person without authority interferes. After which he takes his stick and kills the chief and his wife standing behind him. Then Atticus demands his supplies where Gunner tells him that they can prepare those supplies in nine weeks. Then Atticus leaves and leaves some of his soldiers behind there. Some of them were storing their belongings in a house there, in which a robot named Jesse 1435 was helping them. Two soldiers who were their leaders started torturing the villagers. When one of them sees Jesse, he starts telling their boss that robot used to work for the previous king. But when one assassin killed him, all the robots like him refuse to take up their weapons. Then to prove his point, he starts attacking him unnecessarily. As he said, Jesse takes the beating silently, but a soldier stops him where he threatens to kill him too. Then their commander intervenes and forces them all back to work. While Jesse is cleaning herself on a river, Sam comes to him. Seeing him reminds Jesse of Princess Isa about whom all the robots decided after hearing the prophecy before she was born. They thought that they could even sacrifice their lives for their princess, but when on the day of the coronation of Christ, her entire family was murdered along with her. The desire of all those robots to live with the princess also ended. But when Sam dresses him with flower crown, and she touches him, 
we can see the glow on the lifeless face of Jesse. On the other hand, the people of Serigan hold Gunnar responsible for the death of their chief. That is why even after all this, he says that if we start giving their supplies to the Imperials, then they will definitely spare their lives. Hearing this, Cora does not feel good at all, and she starts preparing to leave from there. Her father explains to her that the villagers need her, and if Cora joins the rebels who are being searched by the Imperials so that they can fight for their freedom. However, Cora says that no warrior in the world can face the Imperials. If they start a fight with them, then everyone's death is certain. Hearing that Cora will not serve the Imperials by staying here. But as she was leaving, she sees that the soldiers were about to do something wrong to Sam. The soldier tries to stop them, but along with Sam, they also take him prisoner. Then their commander captures Sam, and seeing this, Cora comes in front of them with hammer. The soldiers point their guns towards her, but Cora starts playing their band without any hesitation. She starts killing them one by one, where the soldier also supports her. After killing the last soldier, she sees that the commander has made Sam a hostage. At this moment, Jesse comes there, when the commander orders him to kill both of them. Then Jesse picks up a gun and shoots the commander and saves Sam's life, and then goes away from there. Then the whole village guys come there, and Cora tells them that we have to fight. In the next scene, her father gives her a gun which he found with Cora in his ship where Cora was going to go to General Titus who was once the leader of the Mother World. He then remembers that Gunnar had made a deal with a rebel named Bloodhex, where he says that only one person knows their address, and that is him. Then both of them set out on their journey, and when they stopped at a place for the night, Gunnar asks Cora that how can you say with such confidence that the Imperials will not spare them? After which, she is told that when she was nine years old, Belisarius along with his army attacked her planet where she met him for the first time. Belisarius killed thousands of people, including Cora's family, but he spared her life. Perhaps he saw something different in Cora. He named her Arthes and taught her the ways of the mother world, where she lived with them on the King's Gage ship for five years. When she grew up, Belisarius made her a part of his army along with his daughter, Leah, where Cora also fell in love with a man. Not only the Imperials had told her to do, because when fate would show its magic, and he would die. His soldiers would get a purpose to kill the enemies of the Imperials, and there would be no purpose more dangerous than revenge. Gunnar asked her how she was so sure that the Imperials would not spare them because if Cora were in her place, she would have done the same. Well, the next day they reach a Providence city called Veld, but there they find that Gunnar's men were captured by the bounties who work for the Imperials. The only thing Gunnar knew about the Blood Hexes was that they were living under the protection of King Vertica on a planet named Sharon, after which both of them. They go to a bar there and order drinks. Cora says that it is not without danger to go near the Blood Hexes because he is also the target of the Imperials at this time. So first he will go to Titus, and then a creature come to them, who wanted to buy Gunner when Cora asks him to leave, but he doesn't listen to her. So she explains it to him in her way, and he runs away from there. After which Cora asks everyone in the bar about Titus, and a blue creature tells them through a man that last time, he heard that Titus was on a planet named Polex. Now they have to arrange a ship to go there, when that creature man comes there again. There were three other people with him. Cora did not want to do this, but she killed all three of them one by one. Finally, a guy named Kay helps Cora by killing the man behind her. When they start leaving, Kay says that if they want to go to Polex, he can take them to his ship, and when Cora tells him that she can gather soldiers to fight against Mother World, Kai agrees cheaply and starts taking them to Polix in a ship, but he knows a place on the way where they can find a soldier, so he starts going there first. On the other hand, when Atticus is strangely drunk when one of his officers tells him that some bounty hunters have captured a man who knows the whereabouts of the Blood Hexus rebel, whom Atticus was eager to meet. 
Kai sends his ship to a place called New Valley. They are taken to a planet where they come upon a rancher that was being held by a man named Herrick, who was enslaving him to pay off his debt when Kor and Gunnar tell him that they are going to fight against the Imperials. Tarek wanted to support them, but the price of his freedom was too high, so the rancher makes a bet with him that if he can ride that dangerous creature, he will forgive his debt, and upon hearing this, Tarek agrees. After that, he goes to that creature, which was very dangerous and angry. Tarek asks the others to leave from there, and then bows his head in front of him, and then climbs on top of him, and ties a rope on his mouth and makes him fly. They both start passing through the mountains, and then the creature drops Tarek into a slope, but Tarek runs and climbs back on top of him, and after some time they come back to him. By seeing the rancher freeze Tarek, they started leaving from there with Tarek. By inspiring Tarek's bravery, Korra tells Kay that she needs some more warriors like Tarek. Kai takes them to a mining planet named D where they meet a warrior named Nemesis, and when Kai asks her for help in saving Korra's village, she does not say anything, because a woman was asking for help, and Nemesis goes to a place where she comes across a human spider named Herma who had kidnapped the woman's baby, because before humans came to this planet, they ruled here. But when mining started at that place, due to radiation, Ramada can no longer give birth to children, and hence now she will kill the children of all the mothers. Nemesis tries to convince her, but when she does not agree, they both start fighting. Seeing the opportunity, Gunner saves the girl, and Nemesis also uses her ability to kill that spider lady. But she does not like this thing at all. In the next scene, we see that Nemesis was with them in that ship, which means that she is helping them. While Gunner and Korra were talking, we learn that after seeing Korra's courage and loyalty, the king made her the bodyguard of Princess Isa. During this time, Korra learned that Isa had a lifeless ability to give life to Titus. He was also convinced that Jesus would save them from all. Well, then they reached the moon of Pollux, which was the gladiator arena, and there they see that Titus had become a drug addict. Seeing this, first, she bathes him, and then Korra asks him for help, but Titus had lost his soldiers, and now all hope is lost. But Korra says that they have one last chance to get revenge on Mother World, and after hearing this, they agree. On the other hand, they bring the man who knew the address of the blood hexes to Atticus, who says that for telling him their address, he wants his freedom in return, and Atticus agrees. After this, the man tells them to go to the tavern where they were under the shelter of Revel's King Levitt. Then Atticus frees him by killing the man, and Saran knows. But before them, Kai had arrived there with the others, and Levitt tells Korra that the blood hexes are about to meet them. After some time, many ships arrive there, including Darian and Devra. The blood hexes emerge who were brother and sister. Korra tells them about their mission, and says that they cannot face the Imperials with just fist warriors so they need their army. But when they do not agree, Korra says it is said that when Gunnar had given supplies to his army, due to this, the Imperials came to his village where blood hexes are also responsible for their condition. After hearing this, Darian agrees, and after talking to his sister, he tells their army that anyone who is ready to fight with me should come forward. Hearing this, many soldiers come forward, and then Darian tells Devra that he has to quickly leave this planet with the rest of the army. Then they all return to Korra. On the way to the village, Kai tells Korra that he also wants to help her and her villagers. How long will he continue to live a life of dishonesty? But before going to the village, he has to deliver some packages at a place so he enters the coordinates of that place and starts going there. On the other hand, Atticus had reached Ran and started wreaking havoc there. Levitt had given shelter to the Blood Hexes, knowing that they were enemies of the Imperials. Hence, Atticus kills him and starts destroying the planet. When an officer tells him that one of their bounties has been discovered, whereupon hearing this, Atticus demands to go there himself, while Kay sends them to a planet named Gandival. 
Then they start taking the packages out of his ship, and Darien sends his men to keep an eye on them from above, when Korra sees that Kay has betrayed them where King's Gage arrives and attacks them. Some robots also emerge from those packages, which capture all the warriors along with Korra. Kay was going to hand them over to the Imperials from the beginning. He just took Korra to all the places where she could be held by the Imperials. Enemies can be found like Tarek and Titus, and by combining them all, the Imperial will make him rich. After which Atticus comes there who knew all those warriors, and when he will hand them over to Belisarius, then his promotion is sure to happen, especially Korra, who is real. After which Kay sets up Gunner and gives him a gun and asks him to kill Korra. Gunner loads the gun but only to free Korra, and then he shoots Kay standing behind. Korra also starts shooting at them, and a battle starts between them. During this time, the other warriors also get free and confront the Imperials boldly. Darien tells his men to go to the ships, and seeing this, Atticus points towards the King's Gage, where they destroy those ships along with Darien's men. And seeing this, Darien becomes sad. He gets angry where he runs towards the King's Gage and attacks the soldier controlling the weapon system of that ship. But he starts shooting at Darien from inside, where Darien does not accept defeat and kills him with his spear. He kills that soldier, and while dying, he turns the ship downwards so that the ship starts tilting, and after going straight, it crashes on the bridge, due to which it gets divided into two parts. And due to this, Atticus goes straight and falls into a platform. Then Korra comes there, and a fight starts between them. At first, Atticus overpowers Korra and starts pushing her down, but then Korra comes back up with the help of a rope and wounds Atticus so badly that he falls down. We see a woman named Millis crying over Darien's death, to whom Tarek explains that his legacy must carry him forward, and then begins to pull Korra towards Korra's platform using a rope. Korra says that after the destruction of King's Guess, the Imperials will now retreat and call their ships back to the Mother World. And then they all thank Gunner because without his bravery, perhaps this would have been impossible. After which they all return to their planet, and Korra starts going towards her village with all the warriors where we also see Jess who looked like a soldier. But there is a ship near Atticus arrives and takes him to some Imperial doctors who attach him to a neural link and put him underwater. Atticus opens his eyes to a different world where Belisarius was standing before him. Atticus gives them the good news that the Imperials now know where Korra and the rest of the warriors are. But this is not good news for Belisarius as the galaxy's most dangerous warrior is standing with the rest of the Jebus warriors against the Imperials. And if Atticus doesn't give them a chance by beheading Korra, so he is sure to be sacrificed. And then they drop him into the water. And Atticus opens his eyes to the real world, where with this, the movie ends here. So to tell me by commenting how you did like this movie, I will meet you. See you in the next video.